Good morning from St. John's Episcopal Church in and beyond Old Town Saginaw in the Diocese of Eastern Michigan. Today is September the 27th of 2020, the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. The bulletin for this morning's Liturgy of the Word can be downloaded from our Facebook and YouTube posts, as well as the St. John's website. You can also follow along in the Book of Common Prayer, beginning on page 355. With you at home, this is St. John's and St. Matthew's worshiping together online. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are opened, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power, chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, 
when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live, they shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, otherwise iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore. My beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work within you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, when, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not, but later changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we are back in the vineyard for another parable from Jesus. But a lot has happened between last week's gospel and today's. In the chapter and a half that is skipped is told the story of Jesus entering Jerusalem on a donkey, the day we traditionally call Palm Sunday, followed by Jesus going to the temple, the center of Jewish religious life, and overturning the tables of the money changers an act that we call the cleansing of the temple. From here until the end of the church year in November, all the gospels we hear will take place during the time of Jesus' life called Holy Week, the week of his suffering, death, and resurrection. Jesus has points he wants to make, both to the Jewish leaders as well as to his followers, explaining why he needs to suffer and die so that he will save all humankind and rise on Easter. In our gospel today, Jesus is back in the temple the following day after bringing in the eyes of the religious leaders chaos to their religious institution. They decide to challenge Jesus with a question, which he turns back on them, leaving them in a no-win situation. On one level, I feel sorry for the chief priests and the elders because try as they might, they can't trap Jesus in the way that they want to. Eventually, these same leaders will arrest him on trumped up charges and condemn him on the testimony of false witnesses. That time is drawing close, but it is not yet. The vineyard parable Jesus tells us today is about two sons and a request from their father. The father goes on, to, goes to the first son and requests he goes to work in the vineyard, to which the son replies something like, I don't really want to, but then thinks more about it and goes. The father makes the same request of the second son, who says something like, sure, I'll be glad to go, but then never goes. So Jesus asks, which son did the father, what, which son did what the father asked? And they said, the first. To which Jesus replies, and I'll quote from a different, bit of a different translation, it's called the message. Yes, and I tell you that crooks and whores are going to proceed you into God's kingdom. John came to show you the right road. You turned up your noses at him. 
But the crooks, they believed him. Even when you saw their changed lives, you didn't care enough to change and believe in him. End quote. Jesus' response that these unholy, unworthy people in the eyes of the religious leaders are going to get into God's kingdom before they will. Not surprisingly upset these leaders. They didn't want to hear that. In their mind, all they had to do was keep the rules and they were assured of a place. Who is this Jesus coming and upsetting their way of thinking, challenging their position, trying to tell them who's in and who's out? This is not only a question for Jesus' time. It's a question that we continue to pose today. Sometimes in our own hearts and minds, and sometimes in our actions. Occasionally we can hear people, even within a faith community, who discount others as unworthy. Are women allowed in positions of leadership? Do women have the right of their own body? Are people of other races, skin colors, or religions truly made in the image of God? What about people who are gay, mentally ill, or homeless? It's an interesting question to think about. Who will I be standing next to in the kingdom of God? And I would imagine that we will be surprised. I'd like to share a brief illustration of this. For many years, I lived in a upstairs downstairs duplex. My landlady, I'll call her Mary, lived beneath me. Now Mary was what we would call a traditional Roman Catholic. And she believed, as she was taught when she was young, that only cat Roman Catholics went to heaven. Even her own children, who had fallen away from the faith, as we used to say, she didn't believe that she was going to see them again. And we would talk a lot, because Mary came to the church that I worked at, and I would give her a ride every Sunday morning, and we would speak about that, but she was just so sure that only people who were Roman Catholic were going to be in heaven. Well, eventually, Mary got sick, and she died. And when her son called me to tell me that she had died, the first image that popped into my head was Mary beating St. Peter and God and whoever is at the pearly gates or whatever you want to call them, and being shocked at all these people that she thought weren't going to be there, greeting her with open arms. The reality is that Jesus welcomes all, both religious and the lost, both the righteous and the struggling. There is something important here about changing one's mind. The first son changes his mind and went. The tax collectors and the prostitutes believe that, Jesus, that John came in the way of holiness. But the chief priests, the elders, the religious leaders, they didn't change their minds. Even after seeing all these others that believed. Actually what happened was seeing those lowly people believe, hardened their own inability to believe. So what causes us to change our minds? What allows for our hearts to be changed? What blocks us from allowing ourselves to grow in God's love? What Jesus is saying, both in his question to the religious leaders about John's baptism, and into his questions about which of the two sons did the will of his father, is that the God of Israel, who gives him his authority, is the same God of Israel who welcomes sinners and prostitutes and each one of us. Thanks be to God and challenges us to do the same. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning are Form 4, found in the Worship Bulletin, and in the Book of Common Prayer on page 388. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. In the St. John's family, we pray for Lindell, Bob, Teresa, Barbara, Judy, Brian, Mike, Shirley, Nancy, Alan Jane, Sharon, David and Nanette, Rod, Dave, Karen, Ted, and the Standing Committee of the Diocese of Eastern Michigan. For those celebrating birthdays this week, Tammy Tribe and Barb Ilka. We pray also for those celebrating wedding anniversaries, especially Jim and Rose Shannon, as well as Tom and Linda Chernevsky. And for St. Matthews, we pray for Rich, Donna, Janice, Tim, Chris, Nick, and Rob. And celebrating birthdays this week are Dominic Diamor and Amy Christensen. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. 
Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully with his favor look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace that you may live faithfully together in this life and in the age to come have life everlasting. Amen. Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted in a wonderful order the ministries of angels and mortals. Mercifully grant that as your holy angels always serve and worship you in heaven, so by your appointment they may help and defend us here on earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have truly sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offering and come into his courts. Hello, friends. My name is Mike Chesnevsky, and I've been attending St. John's for about three years now. A few things I like about St. John's are the people. The people are great. They make you feel like family every time you come in the door. The music, the music is awesome, and our traditional worship. So if you're looking for a good church home, go to St. John's. Our services are 8 a.m. and 10.30 on Sunday mornings. Hope to see you there. All are welcome. God bless.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, wherever your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray that you come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.